All right, folks, welcome back. Harmless Dave here, uh, talking real music in real time for a few real people out there, uh, just like you and just like me. Um, another special guest on the show today. You may be familiar with this person. I've had him on a couple of times. Um, I was trying to use an alias or something because he likes to keep a low profile. And when I have him on, you know, I try to keep everything very relaxed, low key, conversational. Um, Eric Clapton, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, David. You're looking you? good. You look good. You look very relaxed. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm nearly that. I, I'm trying to get used to it. I've just come into the state, so, uh, and it's very hot. Yes. I'm getting used to the sunshine. We don't have much of that back where I come from. And uh, so, uh, and it's jet lag time. It hits me about right now, about five o'clock in the evening. I ought to be having a nap, but I we made our, our appointment, our rendezvous, and I, I'm determined to 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 take it. So right, I'm just I'm gonna try to keep you awake throughout this uh, that's, little segment. That's the here. idea. That's so the idea. Uh, we we had a conversation about Robbie Robertson, and uh, I know from your history, um, you inducted uh, the band into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I remember that, and. Yeah. I remember you being at that that little well, concert. When were you born? When were you born? You were born around that time, right? <laughs> it's a little <laughs> little before that, okay. But here's another little piece of history. You were also at the last waltz, uh, and Van Morrison was there too, which is which is crazy. Thinking that you guys got together a couple of years back and did that uh, nice little tune that one of my favorite all time Eric Clapton Van Morrison. Uh, combos it was just uh and it it was such a, a timely message a lot of people here didn't hear that song but i i had that on repeat play but the last waltz man um everybody was there what was what was that like um it was it was pretty rushed because i think uh, uh it came out of nowhere really i think everyone uh was on the road you know there was uh, 74 or something like that and we were all uh, all the people there were probably doing gigs, and they had we had to fit it in, and it was um, it was an honor to be asked. I mean, it was it was a, a very a great privilege, and and I when um, when Robbie moved on, um, I got everyone in you know my family in, in the room to watch it, and uh, I hadn't watched it for a long time, and I was amazed at how. Uh, Young everyone looked. <laughs> everyone looked young, and the, and some of those people are gone, obviously. And uh, but I thought Dylan was fantastic, and uh, you know that everybody, Doc, and Mac Rabinac, which is Doctor John, mm -hmm. just I mean, peerless. Those guys are, and my strap comes off right at the beginning of the song, and, and so I go into uh, some kind of automatic part. I'm not particularly proud of my my bit because <laughs> so, i get the guitar sound and i immediately have to give it away to robbie which is uh fine but i would i wanted to talk about um because i you know, i only talk to you you know you know that don't you i don't talk to journalists yeah that that's that's perplexing and everybody that the one thing they always ask me is so so why why is he talking to you well, and they, i'm like because you, you you listen and you're respectful and and you're honest and you and it's uncensored it's uh i feel safe to talk to you i don't know i don't expect it and it's also that i feel that a certain amount of it is not going to reach the mainstream and if it does it'll be the the bit that that is kind of salacious or whatever if we but we don't have any of that today so but um, I wanted to talk to somebody, you know, because when these things happen, um, my my family's really young, you know, my wife's younger than me quite a lot. And uh, so there's nobody to talk to about, you know, other than Van or, you know, the guys yeah. that have left um, about what it was like, you know, what it was like then to be to be in. In, in that world, in the, the industry, if you can call it that, and hear that happen. And I'm, there's a man who should be recognized in this story, 
called Alan Parisa, and he was uh, a connoisseur of music, of just good taste, of all kinds of other things, substances, and and women and movies, and he lived in LA. And when Cream came to LA, he came and took me to his house, which was in Laurel Canyon, and it was cantilevered over the canyon. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful place. He was a really, he drove a little Porsche. He was a very understated guy. And he said, I've got something that you might like to hear here that's just coming out. It's not out yet. Uh, but I thought you'd like it. And he had these Altec Voice of the Theatre speakers suspended from the ceiling at an angle. And he gave me this split. And he started to play Big Pink quite loud. And I'm on a couch with the, the band like about three feet away from me. <laughs> full, full flood, you know. And uh, and with this this stuff called Ice Bag which was uh, the best Mexican grass that I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I was transported to uh, another dimension, really, completely. And I was uh, doing gigs with that you know, maybe the following day or even that night with Cream. And we went on and did I'm So Glad and, uh, you know, Sunshine and all these things. And I just thought, oh, man. What the f what what am I doing doing this? And there's that that has already been going on. And you know, was at that time not a great fan of Dylan, uh, because in the Yardbirds, one of the players was a folk fan, and he liked Joan Baez and Dylan and Judy Collins, and it was all just too esoteric for me. And uh, I like Chicago blues, etc. So I was biased against Dylan. And when Dylan came through. London with the band. Um, I didn't really get, I didn't see him, but but when Alan Parisa played me that, and just while we're still talking about him, he introduced me to Delaney and Bonnie. He managed Delaney and Bonnie and wow, okay, and on the blind faith tour. That's yep. how that happened. So he was he's a man that ought to be. We ought to talk about him in terms of iconic characters around around the scene in LA, he was the man. And uh, in San Francisco, it was Owsley who made the the acid, you know, there was all these <laughs> the chief, chief characters, but Robbie, then I said to Alan, could you arrange a meeting? Cause I have to meet this guy. Cause he, he made it clear that Robbie was the, the sort of chief of that little club, you know, the gang. And, right. Uh, and, and and sure enough, the next time, or maybe even a month or two later, at Alan's house, there was Robbie. And and because Alan would know Robbie, Ro Alan knew everybody, you know. And uh and I said, Can I can we hang out sometime? Where do you live? And he said, oh, We're in Woodstock. So I because I, I, I can I come up there? And I had permed hair, <laughs> red trousers, and sort of malt. Multicolored, it was, you know, uh, cream was going through the acid thing. And, yeah. uh, and I showed up there and I and I met them and uh and I got I got to meet Bob and Bob was was being a kind of farmer at the time and it was great, it was great, but it took me away, it took me away from where I was kind of um going for second best. I mean, all these years later, I do look back on Cream with much more respect and uh, 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 and gratitude and admiration because we didn't really know what we were doing, but we were doing our best, and we were from different schools of music. Music, so it was uh, difficult for us to merge, but we did. But um, when Robbie passed, I. Um, I went back, you know, and I revisited, I listened to everything. And uh, and I started to think about, well, what really happened there? Um, because I, you know, I, I looked at band renditions uh, of some of the songs, some of the performances the band did after the band broke up seemed to be far superior to what they were doing before he called it a day. And it seemed to me, you know, and I was speculating on 
what had happened and and looking at some of the gigs when he, he was still there before it broke up. And you could see how they kind of want they, they they got it out of they were out of order. You know, they were doing all kinds of things and and you could see how he could make that decision. But it looked to me like uh after it happened, after the last wars, they got their act together. I mean, some of the, the shows they did for the next five years until they started relapsing again, as it were, mm-hmm. were phenomenal. I mean, it, like they, they got tight and straight. And uh, and I uh, and I imagined that at that point, Robbie could could have regretted it. You know, I, I, I've always I've always wondered whether or not because he went whenever we talked about it, he went on the defensive really quick. Uh, it will automatically to say, you know, it was it was crazy. It was too difficult to, and maybe um, maybe it wouldn't have been possible for him to stay there and have it um, healed. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was lucky. I was very fortunate to get. Uh, to get into the program and it kind of wasn't it wasn't easy i mean i kind of went in and out and came back and i've been clean and sober for it'll be 36 years this year and uh wow. and, and if any of those i don't know if they any if they went near it you know leave on and uh and rick or, or richard if they if they managed if that had been around for them or if they'd managed i think it would be a different story and uh and Robbie, in, in later years, was associated. You know, he knew more about that, I and mean, it was part of his life. And but I, I wanted to, you know, that when I saw the last waltz, I saw what its value was, and the, and the band, the band to me was amazing because they were all giants. That every one of them was a giant mm-hmm. on his own. Yeah. But they did one another, and he was the visionary, you know. Yeah, and I have no doubt that he wrote all those songs. That was always that. Um, yeah, I mean the 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 weight could be considered one of the the greatest songs, rock songs. Although the thing about the band is they threw every kind of music into it that you could imagine. It was. I think Robbie talked about how it was like kind of like a gumbo and you you just stir it up and you got the blues and you got R&B and you got gospel and you got rock and you've got country. I mean, I don't think the world had heard anything quite like that. And that was one of the reasons I think it, it just caught on. And I mean, your Hall of Fame speech where you're talking about that, like saying, I wish I could be in this band, you know, and I've, you know, you talked about Cream saying Cream was pretty good, but you know, while this band was around, I really wanted to be in this band. And then you well, yeah, said something they, like, I glad you know, I was glad they were a non the other thing is uh, uh if you had taken that to its conclusion and if 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 Robbie had said, Well, do you want to join? Uh when I was up there, um, I may have said yes. <laughs> but then we wouldn't have done that because it would have been I was already um like uh this kind of celebrity. And they, none of them, none of them personally, individually, were celebrities. They were right. all, that was their thing. They, even the name was anonymity. Yes. So that's, that was also what was magnetic for me because I always <laughs> wanted anonymity. I wanted to be in the rhythm section, you know, and I yeah. just wanted to be in the rhythm section. And, uh, and, that, and I would have, if that had been possible, to sneak in, even wear a disguise and play rhythm guitar, <laughs> um, then we could have done it. But it was, you know, it was it was going to be. It was never going to happen. And and uh, I, I, you know, and it seems so long ago now that it's incredible to me that in some ways music, you know, they talk about the day the music died or day, you know, there, there's been nothing since. It's all been individual. There's not really been. That because they yeah. took it seriously, it wasn't about market or no, trend. they weren't they weren't trying to be commercial at all. You know, no. they they had in fact, I think uh, their songs got a little bit of radio airplay, uh, not on like your Billboard top forty stations for the most part, but good FM rock stations. That's where you heard yeah. the band. That's how I learned about it 
Eric, because again, it's a little before, you know, my, my time as far as really getting into music, but you had to know about the band. If you didn't know, then, you know, it's kind of like not knowing one of the founding fathers. You're like, who's George Washington? You know, who's, who's this band? You should know this uh, and you should yeah. go research. And, and that's how I learned about it. I didn't learn about it because it's, it's not on the radio much here in the States anymore at all. Well, we'll have to do something about that, I think. Yeah. I, yeah but uh, I'm going to play. You see, the other thing is that it's, I, I, I listen, I've listened to it all my life, obviously now half of my life. And, and without ever trying to play, because I did, we did jam mm -hmm. from time to time and I played the song, but I'm now going to do, I want to do a couple of the songs in the shows that I've come to do um, uh, as a tribute. And, well, you know, when people uh, underestimate his, what he does, uh, they ought to try doing it because like the intros to songs, the little things that sound like they're kind of scrappy off the cuff, which is part of his unique uh, uh, attractiveness to me is that it sounds like he's only just now working out this will work. And yeah. I'm sure it's much more crafted than that. I know him well enough to know that he was really precise about what he did. And it and it it is so difficult. It is so difficult. But to get that, to recreate that, that kind of mm -mm, on the edge of expression and not not making a mistake, not blowing it, it's really, really difficult. Um, so I, I take it you you uh think he was a, a great musician as well as, do, yeah. as a great songwriter because he wrote like you said he wrote all those songs i i was introduced to his solo album in 1987 and that was uh, like a wake-up call at, that year there were a few really great albums that came out that year and yeah, again so i'm I like who's this robbie about... robertson guy you know <clears throat> and uh somewhere down that crazy river and yeah. uh, a whole bunch of other the songs that we we played on on the radio at that point and you know because he wasn't the primary lead vocalist in the band so again you're talking about uh being anonymous you know this was even more like okay this guy has a solo album out it is a shame that that band stopped you know when they stopped there's no question about it yeah well i didn't i don't think it, it, it's almost like it would have been impossible to to keep it going because there were so many collisions going on, but there was a period, I thought it was really interesting that that period after the last force where they all tried to get it together and they, you know, they, they, they had uh, supplemented some of the, you know, there was quite a big band going on and, uh, and it sounded great and they were playing great, but, uh, but, and Robbie, you know, was what he was doing was score was Scorsese completely. Oh yeah replace that so he was busy i mean he was always busy and i would go and see the the movies and relish the score because the, sometimes the movies weren't as good as the score i mean with the greatest respect <laughs> he was he was very necessary but you know i i don't know i yeah i was i was gonna you know we we i'm here to do some shows uh I'm here really to do this uh, uh, get, uh, another guitar festival in September, but in order to get that um, up and rolling, I have to play shows first to kind of get in shape, and that and and that means you know learning these songs and learning a few of Robbie's songs and uh, and, and trying to make my bands band play them, not like the band, but like in a complimentary way, and then and then I was hoping oh he would come up. At the festival, you know, because he did a couple of times before, and I wanted him to help. I I asked him when we started uh, planning this if he would advise me. Mm -hmm. You know, and I did talk to him about whether or not you know I was getting going too far down a bluegrass rabbit hole, you know, and uh, <laughs> which is easy. But um, and he said, no, no, no. You know, I mean, it, he was a dear friend, and and he never told me really. He told me he'd been he'd been he was talking to me about being ill, but I never asked him what it was, and I and I don't really know that I, I want to know really other than you know he's gone and uh, it's very very sad. Um, 
and people will never know what a hole it's left, you know, for for us that were around at the time. I don't know if a van will be moved, I know, but so yeah. we're going to do this thing, and th and then the other thing that because I would uh, <laughs> I would talk to him about you know the the other stuff too, and I said that you know. Uh, I asked him about RFK, about Robert. I think really. Well, yeah, I, you're I, in. You're in. Uh, people are talking about you a little bit about that. People were sending me articles about yeah, you and that's RFK. Right. That's good. More the the more the better. Because um, <laughs> he's a great man. He's a great man. I admire him, and I and I tried to donate some money very naively, being an English citizen. Apparently, it was and then and it was illegal. That made. You can't do that, you know. I have to be. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. he asked me. He asked me to join. What you know? He asked me to talk, and I talked to him like we talk. And he's about the only other person I talk like this to. Well, and, see that. Uh, All right. So people watching, I can know it's it's me and RFK Junior. That's it. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> <laughs> makes makes no sense, but you know what? I agree with. It does to uh, me. It does to me because yeah. I could always talk to you. When you know those lovely guys at Oracle, if you you should, I, well, the should is not a great word, but uh, they're really good people. Phil and Liam, you know the uh, yeah. the people that run Oracle. The, I can talk to them. I trust them implicitly. I trust Robin Manotti. Uh, he's another guy I talk to when I'm at home in England. Uh, you'll have to excuse that. I didn't. I didn't hear or see anything. So I think you're all right. I'm gonna take it. It's a phone. Ah, so we're gonna we're gonna have to go to me until. <laughs> That's all but, right. I'm back. I'm all back. right, good. Because I oh. I didn't didn't have anything to ad lib there. So go ahead. Well, the, well, the thing is that uh, so I I did talk to Robert and 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 I talked to a few people about talking to Robert. I, before I did talk to Robert, I I I asked around and said, "What's what's the story?" He said, "Don't go near him. Don't go near him." Yeah, um, you'll be you'll you'll go. It'll, he'll take you down. <laughs> he'll take you down. Well, thought, see, you have nice. like my kind of guy. So, um... <laughs> you, as soon as you get off the narrative, man, as soon as you as soon as you start exploring something else, they're going to call you uh, guilt. It's guilt by association. Oh, you yeah. know, you know, his whole family, uh, you know, has has basically said, well, he doesn't speak for us, and this and that, and. You know, I got a couple yeah. of his books lying around here, at least no, his last. I, you know, I, but um, I took, I did, I did my toe in, um, in the water, and I talked to him, and I thought, I, I like this guy. He's honest, and uh, and he's friendly, and he's kind, and he says things that make sense about the, the you know, this the country that yeah. we live in, and the, and then the world. You know how to how to approach. Host, hostile situations he knows how to approach a hostile situation you you mean diplomacy you're talking people, about diplomacy yeah. right yeah they, well they used to they used to have people that did that um <laughs> i mean and one of uh, one of his friends or his 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 his, his uncle worked with a guy called david harlock who was the ambassador uh in what the british ambassador in washington who was John F. Kennedy's right hand man through the the, the Cuban crisis, yeah. through talking with Khrushchev and, and all these people, um, and and so Robert knows those kids, and I went out with one of those, the girls in that family. So there's like lots of links, but the, his so that guy was a diplomat. Yeah. They, so they 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 were raised. Uh, the Kennedys, you know, have always had that in in mm. their background that the, the the other the alternative approach to nuclear war. You know, what's the other what's the other avenue? And so he's he's but uh, yeah, he's a he knows how to do that. Yeah, and he and, and what I got from just talking to him myself was that he could talk to anybody and he listens. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and when I've seen him in debate and I because I then I started what checking him out and watching him talking to uh hostile journalists who would always do that thing that they classically do which is the minute he answers the question and 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 puts it there 
they don't take a second to process what he said. No. They've got the next question, which is also hostile and difficult to answer, ready to go. So you think this is not even this is he's got to do this, but it's a waste of time in a way because the people he's talking to are not listening, but it's on camera. So people are seeing him. And I think that's, you know, I'm really optimistic because people are seeing someone by default, in a way, talking intelligently about mm -hmm. alternatives to what seem to be impossible situations. Yeah, well, I think that's great. There's a, the there's a political machine in place. That's all I can say. And, uh, you know, I, I wish and hope that, you know, he does well. It, but, you know, as, as far as uh, these two parties that we have here in the United States are pretty much bought off and it's it's all corporate and he is actually pushing back against that. So, you know, it's it's he's not only fighting the political system, but he's fighting. Yeah, but what he everything. has to offer is unique in that he is. I don't know anything about politics, David. I know nothing about party politics and being in England, if you were to try and sort out what the difference is between a conservative politician and a, lib a liberal or a Labour politician, mm -hmm. you get lost in five minutes because what it comes down to now is individuals, whether or not you are attracted to an individual. And this is where Trump was so successful because he groomed everybody on TV for such a long time that when he came, when he took that gamble, it was he was already a celebrity. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, people don't know what, they're not going to watch C-SPAN to see yeah. whether or not Rand Paul is an interesting guy. They don't know. But I mean, Rand Paul was to go on Big Brother, you know. Yeah. It would, but now, so, so Robert is doing all this, and, and it, you can see it. He's well, a, it's, it's genuine. Visual. He's genuine, he's yeah. intelligent, and, and and he can debate, you know. Absolutely. No, I, I agree 100%. I Just knowing what's happened here the last two election cycles, uh, it's I, I just, I hope he's um, got good security. I'll say that. And I, I just, you know, as, as if he gets anywhere, it's, it's going to be without the help of any of the large media organizations it's going to be him and it's going to be the people and it's going to be independent media that like yours good. truly and think, and other that outlets would be an, that would be an honest result if the people can see him and uh and i think they can you see i think that people do you have to give people the credit to give have a gut feeling for, for things yeah and i'm so what i wanted to the news was i'm going to play for him in LA, I'm going to do a fundraiser. So uh, that's okay. Something. Wow. So are, you're doing a fundraiser for RFK in LA? Yeah, on the 18th of September. Yeah. That's good. Kind of, now, did you announce that yet, or is that is that breaking news here? I am an. I have, who do I announce it to, Dave? I'm announcing <laughs> it to you. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be I'd like, you're Eric Clapton and I'm not. So I'm thinking to myself, you must have a team of people who are going to say, okay. I don't, let, I, I don't trust them. I mean, I, there is a team of people, but they're not, uh, I, I, they're good people. They're good yeah. people, but they're, they, it, it's very difficult for them to speak for me. Yeah. Because well, when they try, they get, they try to, they try to be, keep, keep they try to protect me. You know what I mean, right? And and that's what, you know, what that's how they see. That's their role. That's they they see that as their job description. And you have to give. And I respect that. You know, it's very kind. But I, if it comes down to it, I I I spoke to our guy and and said, look, I'm going to do this. Is it all right if I and 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 I sent him a a, a, a video clip. So he's using that anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just of me saying, looking forward to seeing you in September. So it's it's kind of not big. And I don't think, you know, I don't know how far the ripples go from what you do or what we're doing here. Who knows? Yeah, who who knows? It's like I, t I told you before, um, the whole thing is just being suppressed. You know, and this, this even yeah. though I'm sure a lot of people will watch this, um, yeah. compared to what 
should happen with this, it's probably going to be a drop in the bucket. You know, I like it though. I like no, I know. <laughs> You're like the I JJ like... Kale character. It's you want to hide behind. It's yeah. JJ. It's JJ's world. And yeah. <laughs> guess who hasn't been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of? You know what I mean? So talk that's... about influence, right? <laughs> they always say influence, influence, and then, yeah. Um, so many musicians covered his his stuff, and it's. Yeah, you're right. 100%, 100%. That would be one where I'd say, okay, a lot of people don't know who this guy is, but they really should. And all of the yeah. rock musicians, the quality rock musicians know or knew who he was. And so they're the ones that should be advocating. Like these guys should be writing to the Hall of Fame. Hey, what about uh, J.J. Kale? Yeah. Well, again, it's, a, it's the political machine, the rock yeah. and roll Hall of Fame itself. Yeah, I mean, they they really should rename it. There was a musician that came out and said, why don't they just call it the Music Hall of Fame now? Because it's not, it's not really the rock, it's not really the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame anymore. It's um, all of this well, political it, stuff that's going on. What's got to do with music? When did, how do you become a championship musician? Yeah. Is that, what is that all about? You know, there's no... Well, the rules get the rules used to kind of I think people it was like a self evident truth, you know, like Chuck Berry. Okay, you know, you hear names and you go, yep, automatic, you know, and now it's like the nominees come out, you just scratch your head going, there's like a half of one thing on this list that I would induct into the Hall of Fame. And it's just to me, uh, this is my opinion. It's not everybody's opinion, because some people say, hey, that's a great list. It's very diverse and very interesting. Well, it's all born out of the, the concept of there being a greatest. Yeah. Anyone is that anyone would be the greatest or, right. you know, best, the best, the top hundred, you know, or the top 10. Or the, it's bullshit. You know, it's, it's bullshit for people. It's for people who don't know how to experience the whole thing. Yeah. So they have to, it's like one upmanship in, in music, by that. I mean, right mean. well see my the way i see it now is it's become very political and uh there's certain people that they want to put in now and certain other people that they don't want to put in now and everybody can see that so yeah. it, it, you're not fooling me as to why so and so is getting in and i'm not going to mention any names but you know i look at the old footage like i i watched you uh inducting the band which which was great and you were you were up there and i'm like these are the and you were saying like these are quality musicians the way your speech was really good because you were saying these aren't guys that were trying to be commercial they were just great and they were really great together and you don't see that kind of stuff anymore everything is like how many people are watching this on youtube millions of viewers that's more important than the quality of the music yeah yeah so <laughs> so i was waiting for you to say something there i'm sorry so um <laughs> you said it, you yeah. Said it. You said yeah um the uh so you're you're going to be doing several gigs here in the states and uh yes. so you're you're kind of warming up for that and you're playing a, a gig for uh rfk jr that that's pretty exciting um yeah yeah who's going to be invited to that is just really special people or is it just I for? In a, I think it's in a private home, right? I, I imagine it would be his pals, and uh, uh, there's a great thing because there's a great thing in, or you know, a lot of people are saying, uh, "I've come across this that uh, you know, I think that, that he's great, but we don't go along with all of his stuff." But there's a guy called um, Charles Eisenstein who's one of his advisors, and I'll send you a link because it's too difficult for me to get it uh, right and quote it, but um, the, he, he, I because I found it difficult for a, a one point when he retracted that tweet about Roger. Yeah. Um, because of Roger's stance on the Middle East, on, you know, Israel-Palestine politics. That, um <laughs> You're, I didn't think you were going to talk about any of this stuff today. So, I, I, nor do I. I don't know what I did, but at the same time, it's relevant because I was nearly going to pull out of the. I didn't know if I could really, honestly, sort of support this when when Robert said, uh, "We're I'm pro-Israel, and the mm -hmm. family has always been pro-Israel, 
And then I and, and I react. My thing is I react too quick in this mm -hmm. situation. I thought, oh my God, no. Um, then I saw, I watched it again, and it was a, someone with a microphone cornered him and said, asked him what he thought about the situation there, uh, or, or to explain why he retracted the tweet. And and they asked him, and then he then the same guy with the microphone said, well, what about Palestine? And he said, well, and I almost remember what he said. He said, I hope they get all that they aspire to. And I thought, oh, okay. He, he left the little caveat there, which means that he he's, uh, uh, and then, well, before I finish this, I spoke to a, 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 an Arabian person I know, um, who said the, the only people that can make any difference about, do anything about this is Israel. It has to come from within Israel. So I started to see all this like from a much bigger, yeah, and it's Robert. it's complicated because if you express uh, a slightly different point of view than the than the orthodox point of view, which yeah. um, but then you you it's yeah. what you said earlier on guilt by association, right? Oh, you know Roger Waters. You know a lot of people get mad because I've defended him a yeah. few times because they either misinterpret or they think Everyone. he's they all misinterpret. Yeah, they all misinterpret. And so this thing that I was mentioning about Charles Eisenstein. He's written this essay, which I will send to you, uh, which explains he's on the campaign trail with Robert, and he violently disagrees with Robert on that issue. <laughs> but he sees so much potential in him as a man, as a leader, as a character, that he's convinced he can change his mind. Yeah. And well, I think that's fantastic. That's I, I, so great, you know. That's well, I mean, you need you need to have independence today, I think, more than anything else. I think that's what there are like 70 percent. I think there was one poll, maybe 70, 68 percent of the people here in the United States would like another choice in the upcoming yeah. election. They would like someone else. They don't want the rematch. They would like anybody else and they want to hear other points of view. But, you know, we're spoon fed. I know you guys in the UK are, are spoon fed because I've seen some of the news coverage over there. And it's uh, it's in a lot of different countries where you have to kind of think the way the news tells you to think. Yeah, I might be uh, experiencing slightly different because since the lockdown, I don't watch <laughs> TV. <laughs> I watch I, I watch certain people on YouTube. I watch football matches and movies. But I don't, I do not watch the BBC. Yeah, you're smart. I mean, all day long, because I do this thing where I have patrons and they'll send me messages and they send me link, 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 watch this, watch this. And I'm like, you know, I have, I have kids, I have a wife. And I tell them, I said, and I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just like, you know, I've only got so many hours in the day and yeah. I put my head on the pillow and I like a good night's sleep. It's just, it's just who I am. I'm not this guy who stays up late at night, but there are people out there, Eric, it's, it's like an industry for them. It's, it's yeah. a, it's a way of life with social media and the phone is always going off. And I, I'm like, I got to put the phone down, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know how, how you deal with that. I mean, obviously you've isolated well, I, yourself I, I, a little I'm bit. A or you... I'm a worker. So I have to create, um, an environment like I've come to Columbus here with my wife. We have a house here and with a studio in it. And I'm just me and her. And, uh, and like today she goes to see her family and, uh, and I, I start practicing and mm -hmm. I start learning how to play like Robbie Robertson, you know? And, uh, yeah. So yeah, he was like, kind of a unique man. player. He's, he was, he was not like anyone else. I think, I think he had his own vibe. Like well, you said, yeah, well, he had a dip, you, you, if, if you saw his hands for a star, he had hands like, like a boxer. You think he would? They could play piano, but I'm. He, he had very, very wide fingers. Not fat, mm -hmm. but he could, you know that he does. The, there's a lot of uh, there's a, a lot of soul guitar players that do that thing with two strings, uh, at the, going at sliding at the same time. They usually use two, you know, either the thing, you know, like sideways on. He could do it with one finger. He could cover two strings. Wow. 
Yeah. And that's really unusual. So, you know, and I got that from just watching him play and I think, oh my God, it was... Uh... But I, we did an album together, you know, he, well, I used to go and hang with him in his studio in Village Recorders in, in, in the nineties and uh, when my life was all over the place. And, uh, and we were, we were starting working on songs and writing things and he, and what, a, a couple of years later, he, he called me and said, let's, let's finish that album. And he came to London and about two thirds of the way through, I said, I got, I got to walk away. I can't do this. And, uh, and, and I hated to admit it, but I said, my song, you know, we, this is supposed to be a 50, 50 project and my songs aren't good enough. And they uh -huh. weren't, and they're still not. I mean, I wrote some songs and they're not released. Uh, but the album was called How to Be Become a Clairvoyant. So you should, you would love that, I think. I'm going to have to check it out. In the mid, late, late 90s, mid, early millennium, I think. Uh, Clairvoyant. And they, they, you know, there's a lot of good stuff on there. That, and it's me, 50% me and 50% him. Yeah. Really, and it's all that he sings about why he left the band. This is where I get off. And it's beautiful songs, and he don't live here no more. These great songs, right. but I couldn't go to. I mean, I listened to it and thought, why didn't you stick in there? You know, I walked like he walked. Yeah, you guys have stuff in common because people ask you the same questions. You know, they go, "Oh, you had this great band, and you walked away from a cream or walked, yeah, Yardbirds," and then they're, "Why why'd you do that?" You know, pressure, the pressure, man. It's like if you were if you were Robbie in the band. And you'd made what how many albums? How many do you how many did they make? Ten or I, twelve? And it would it seemed so effortless. Mm -hmm. And then it must have reached that point where now we've hit the wall, you know, or he had felt like that as a writer, producer. Yeah. Well, I know yeah. he and he and Levon had some issues, and I, you know, I don't I don't know. Yeah. What if that was more Levon? Because he apparently had some mental Levon, health. Levon issues. was the leader of the leader of the band. Yeah. Before Robbie. So Levo. maybe Levo. it was a battle of the alpha male, like who wanted to be the absolutely. control. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but a great, but, but a great band and amazing, just amazing music, different, very different, uh, very organic, uh, not contrived and uh, still a little bit commercial, but, but not trying to be, you know, which is something you don't, you just don't see anymore. And, uh, it's good that we talk about this because like you say, people are going to forget about this stuff. They're going to forget that this music existed or it had that impact. And he had Dylan with that hat in, during the last waltz. That's all I remember is that great hat he was right. wearing. He looked, he looked really cool, especially for Bob Dylan. I'm like, had so much authority, man. He yeah. could walk and close that show. Who, who could close that show? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. his, that's his backup band, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Incredible. Incredible. So anyway, Eric, I know you, you, you look like you're a little jet lagged. I know you said. I you, beg your pardon. That's not very nice. What? <laughs> well, you told me. <laughs> you told me before you're, we started. You're, you're not supposed to say you look tired. You look, I said at the beginning of the video, you looked great. You do. You look great. You're, you know, what? how old are you? Like 78 or something? 78. Bad, yes. Yeah. 78. Yeah. You look, you look amazing for 78. You, you look great. I mean, we should all look as good as you look at 78. So something for me to shoot for. I'm sure you will, Dave. I'm absolutely <laughs> sure you will. You're doing all the right things. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I appreciate that. And, I, you know, again, the mystery, why me, right? But I, I'm very grateful, very happy that you decided to come on and uh, keep me in the loop with all of this political stuff. Because... I will, man. I will, yeah. I keep, I'll send you, you know, we we'll, we'll stay in touch. Yeah, because uh, you're you're on top of this stuff. You you're um, you know just just kind of know where things are going before they go there. With RFK, I mean he's a good guy to support. I I just I'm very skeptical that um, this system that we have is going to allow someone like him to win. That's that's what I'm worried I think, about. I think him and me should go to Davos and throw <laughs> the people. You're going to talk to Klaus? <laughs> that's, that's where, yeah. I thought I'm going to, because I want to talk to him when when, I, when we do this thing. I'm going to suggest things like that. 
let's yeah. go. Let's go and like, <laughs> throw pots of paint over people. Oh, man. They're going to serve you a nice plate of bugs when you get there, Eric. It's going to be... They're going to say, get ready for the future. Here it is. And then they're yeah. going to fact check my video and say, they do not serve bugs at Davos. Fact check incorrect, you know. So I'm waiting for that. Maybe, um, you know, maybe more people will watch the video so they can fact check what I'm saying because it'll be fun. Yeah. All right. I appreciate All you right. being here. God bless you, man. Uh, keep plugging away. Hey, before you go, new material coming? Can you say? Can you not say? There's an album coming, but it's it, there's so much stuff already there. There's the, all this anniversary stuff that um, I'm now, you know, fully on board with this with my label called Surf Dog, yeah. which is literally run by a couple of surfers down in San, in, uh, and so, what's it, San? Oh, it's near San Diego. Yeah. And, um, and they, they're sitting on all this stuff. They've got it. It's just like an album worth of songs. And they include Pompous Fool and uh, Heart of a Child and, you know, the uh, Stand and Deliver. That's all on there. But new stuff, too. And But we there's going to be an unplugged. There's, there's already been, you know, um, what was the other thing? 24 Nights. Yes. Yeah. And things get re-released and it, it all blocks up the arteries. <laughs> so this, this thing won't come out, uh, this new album won't come out until next year, I wouldn't think. Yeah, well, I, I've got this radio station. Well, it's not mine, but it's an internet radio station that I've kind of been working with, and they play all your stuff. They, If you drop a I'm new song, they put it in heavy rotation, you know? And so I, at least we got one. We got one station that's going to be playing Eric around the clock. Oh, great. All right, sir. Thank Thanks you for being on. And I'll speak to you soon. All right. God bless. Take care. Thank you, Dave. God bless. Bye.